Welcome to the new episode of the UX Design Portfolio series. In this video, I'm going to give you some quick tips and best practices in a UX Design Portfolio. Some of them are more mindset related and the others are more like literal tips. By the end of this video, you should be ready to iterate on your portfolio and take it up a notch. So let's get started and roll the intro. <music> Morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Today we're going to focus on the good things, the good habits, actions to take, things that you can proactively do to make your portfolio stand out, to make your hiring manager say, Oh, sick. Hey, um, we should totally set up a video chat with this candidate. To continue the tradition of my UX design resume series, I'm going to add the bonus content to this video. So watch till the end to find out more. Without further ado, Let's dive right into it. Number one, use large images. You don't want to use anything pixelated, blurry, or anything that can form an impression of lack of care. When you show an UI, there are so many details that go in it. The icon, the four pixel spacing, the one pixel, two pixels margin. If your image is too small, all those details will be lost. Again, there are risks involved in hiring, so hiring manager, cannot assume anything. They can only believe that you can craft high quality polished work if they could see those. And they can only see them if you use large images that can capture all the details. So some actions to take when you present the images on your portfolio, make sure the native size, the default size is at least, I would say a hundred pixels wide. Again, it's the default size. I'm not talking about you have a 500 pixels wide image and you scale up to 1000. I'm talking about the native size should be at least 1000. If you have 1920 by 1080, even better. On the top of that, we can go to number two. Try images with wider aspect ratio. This is actually a trick that I like to use. An aspect ratio of an image can actually change depending on the viewing experience, depends on how you want the portfolio to be seen. For a traditional web portfolio, it's mostly viewed on desktop, meaning the browser windows tend to have relatively a fixed width and mostly in a landscape format, which means a taller image like a square or portrait format, it might not work well in this condition because when you're browsing them, have a square image, it's likely that you are gonna crop it if you wanna max the width of it. Which translates to, if you use wider aspect ratio images in a landscape format, for example, your potential hiring manager can see more information of your website content, of your project detail with the same amount of scrolls. Here's an example. If a hiring manager will only do three scrolls when they look at your website, Using a wider aspect ratio images might give them six images versus if you do a taller or narrower image aspect ratio, they might only see four images. So the option that they can see six images will of course provide them more information. So some actions to take, you can reformat your existing images, reframe them, restructure them into a wider aspect ratio image. And you can use that as the new standard, as the new template for any of the new images that you would create, that you would generate for your new project, maybe for any supplementary materials that you will have for your current projects. Three, use images to tell a story. You might have heard this from a lot of people, but this is what it means. Use mainly images to showcase your project. Even imagine no text, no text at all. How would you present it? It is more challenging, but it's a lot more effective in communicating your ideas. And your hiring manager will surely see the efforts that you put into it. And the next thing is, in your project thumbnails, in your project catalog page, when I see it, I should know or have a general sense of what this project might be about. Which means if it's a web design project, maybe you want to frame it into a browser so that when other people look at it, they will know, okay, it's a web design project. Or if it's a mobile app, then put in an iPhone mockup or Android mockup so that you're telling a story all the way from the beginning before they even click into the project. Plus, doing that will provide a lot of clarity as well. So one stone, two birds. Number four, use crisp, HD, clear, visible images only. So the title is pretty self-explanatory. No yellow green vignette in your photo. No hand shadow. No grainy, noisy sketches. 
Maybe you want a better camera, or maybe you just need to check your phone camera. Maybe it's not operating correctly. So maybe the lens are dirty, so you just need to clean them. Or you might want to take a picture against a white piece of paper and then compare what you take in the photo to an actual white image and see how off the white balance is. Or maybe you just want to double check the lighting. Maybe the lighting is too dark that affects everything in your images. If you notice, this whole point is about photographs. So if you were to present any photographs, in your portfolio, make sure it's crisp, HD, it's clear, it's visible. Doing any of those, to me, is just lack of care. You don't care, so you just want to spend one second, take a photo and be done with it. And if you don't care, why would a hiring manager care? Number five, ignore the text, for now. As you might have heard, an image is worth a thousand words. So, use images to say what you want to say. You know why? Because hiring managers and recruiters they don't bother reading. And I can tell you that too. If I'm hiring, or when I was looking at candidates' portfolio, I didn't read 99% of their text. And if the recruiters and hiring managers ignore it, then as a designer, you should probably ignore it too. Which means, if you plan to include any text, you just have to assume they're not gonna read it. Meaning, the concept of your project cannot depend on the text that you have in your portfolio. Your emphasis must be on the images, not text. I have text in my portfolio, but when I wrote the text, I already assumed people don't read. It's just in case they do, I want the text to explain something else, something more than the picture has to offer. So here are some actions to take. For all the research data, you don't want PDF, you don't want text, try to use graphs and charts to communicate the finding, the data, aka data visualization. For user testing, you don't have to tell me how the session goes from the beginning to the end. Just show me the improvement in the iteration, in the design itself. Maybe in the second iteration, you make changes of A, B, and C. And you can just slightly mention A, B, and C were driven by user testing. By this reason, this reason, this reason. You should also plan the new mindset before you write anything. Just imagine that there's a checkbox that says something like, I acknowledge that no one is going to read this text. The audience do not need this text to understand my design concept. If you check this box, go ahead and write anything. So when you have that mindset, you might be more cautious about, hmm, should I write anything? Or how much should I write? Then it will force you to, hmm, maybe I need to use more images now. Next, like number three, try a version of your project presentation without any words. Use purely images and see what it looks like. You might actually be surprised that this is actually possible. And lastly, you can also use videos and autoplay your videos to present your concepts, not just images, but videos. Videos tend to be better than images because human eyes can actually distinct 300 to 1000 frames per second, meaning human can process 300 to 1000 images at a given second. So let's say a recruiter or hiring manager only spend one minute looking at your portfolio. Then they could totally see more information with videos within one minute. And also, not just more information, but more engaging information. Number six, only show projects that you're proud of. This is especially true if you are a design student or early in your career. You like the project, you're proud of doing it, you don't regret doing it, you like doing it, you have fun doing it. The work that you did could represent you. You are okay signing your name at the bottom corner of the product of your design when it goes out to public. If you have a few of those projects in mind, congratulations, you should totally show those. And perhaps those should be the only ones that you show. And there are a few reasons to this. Reason number one, because you like the project, because all those emotional aspects that go into it, that tends to be a better project because by nature, you will put more effort into it when you're in the process. Reason number two, you are able to elaborate more in an interview because you're so excited about it. You can't wait to share all the information, the details, the discoveries, the insight about the project. And that is a very good sign. Reason number three, it makes sense to only include projects that you're proud of. Let's say you put project A, a project that you don't really like, you're not proud of on your portfolio. In an interview, you present a project A, you got an offer from this company and then they hired you. After you got hired, it's likely that they will ask you to do projects that's similar to project A because you have done it, you presented it, you have the expertise in this area, but project A is not what you want to do. So you will kind of get stuck into this infinite vicious cycle and you don't want that. So here are some actions to take. When you're doing a school project, when in doubt, negotiate with your professor to do a project that you like. 
solve a problem that you really care about. And that will serve you a long way. Your professor or instructor will understand where you're coming from and they will tend to give you the project that you want to do. If you've already done a lot of projects, prioritize them. If you already have three or more projects that you're proud of, maybe just keep those. If not, put the secondary ones to the bottom, keep the ones that you're proud of on top. If you don't have three projects that you're proud of, that's still okay because you can always do a side project to make it up for yourself. The basic rule is if you have them, put them up, put them up top. If you don't have them, find them or do those projects, find time to do them because those are really important in your portfolio. Those are the six do's in the UX portfolio. Hope you learned something new and are ready to iterate on the next version of your portfolio website. And now it's time for the bonus content. Bonus content. I am more than happy to take a look at your UX portfolio and give you some feedback. All you have to do is one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video and then you can send your portfolio link to my email which you can find in the about tab in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username so that I know that you have left that comment. Then I will take a look at your portfolio, give you some feedback and a shout out in the next video. And speak of shout outs, I should do a round of shout out for my audience. So first shout out to my HQ, cheers. The next thank you Cindy, I have sent you back the feedback, hope that's useful. Thank you Alien, I'll make sure that I keep that up. Should I be concerned that Alien loves my content? Thank you Nahal, am I saying that correctly? Feel free to correct me in the comment section down below, I will correct that in my next shout out. And yeah, feel free to send it to me, I will take a look. Thank you, Kelvin, and thank you, Atidia. Good luck to you all on your next portfolio iteration, full-time internships, and full-time jobs. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I will greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash that subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!